Hi, it's Lipstick Gal. Thanks so much for watching today. Let's finish up the third part, part three, of my Satin and Cream Luxury Lipstick Ranking. I'm going to link um, the first and second video because this was 24 lipsticks. I didn't want to put them all in one big long video because the last time I did that, it was an hour long and I was like, that's too much, darling. So I split them up, eight, eight, and eight. And this is the tippy top creme de la creme, my favorite satin and cream lipsticks in my luxury collection. Now, a couple things you're going to want to keep in mind is these are ranked based on, of course, my personal preference, what I'm looking for in a lipstick. I want something that's comfortable. I want something that's not going to instantly go everywhere. I also want something that is going to wear off nicely and reapply easily. That's my criteria and I want bang for my buck. I mean, I really want it to be something that although it is luxurious and although it is fabulous, like I don't want to be paying for all packaging and no substance. Okay. Keep that in mind. Um, here's the rest of the criteria. We're not just talking price. We're talking, does it have a scent? What does it smell like? What is the packaging like? What is the experience using that? How many shades are in the range? What does it feel like when you're wearing it and how long does it wear? Um, I do have like an extra little bonus um, area where I talk about like either experiences or extra thoughts that kind of go into that. So let's jump right in. I'm going to start with um, number eight. We're going to count from eight to number one today. And I, I can't wait because I love every single one of these lipsticks. I love them. I love them. I love them. And here is one that I hadn't tried until last fall. I picked it up during the fall Sephora savings event and it's from Valentino. This is the Rosso Valentino High Pigment Lipstick. So they have a matte formula and they have a kind of creamy satin formula. Um, this is $45 and that's with the whole component. And if you're just getting the refill, it's refillable. These are $30. There is of course a very slight, very light um, kind of floral scent to these. I actually do like the packaging. It is weighty, but a lot of people are going to complain that it's just plastic. I, okay, I see that. I see that. But I feel like a lot of companies are kind of going to that. But it does have a nice heft. It does have a nice weight. And uh, sometimes they'll do limited edition packaging where it'll be white and gold or black and gold. It does have like the name right here on the top. Mine is very smudged. <laughs> My hands always have lotion or makeup or something on them when I'm touching these, but when these are pristine straight out of the box, they're so pretty. This is shade 100R. This is, I think they call this uh, Roman Grace, but it's such a beautiful kind of pink shade. I also have this in a red. Oh my goodness, that red is utter perfection. I love it so much. Um, I decided not to pull nothing but reds for this because I've been wearing a lot of red lipsticks in my previous videos, but I love a red lipstick. So I didn't want to put the red Valentino on for you. Here's what I like about it. I get about, because of this is kind of like a pale shade, I get about three hours of wear out of this pink, but if I'm wearing the red, it goes a lot longer. It hangs in there. I don't feel like it transfers. So I feel like in this satin formula, pigment load and intensity of pigment is going to matter. If you're wearing kind of like a light nude shade or this lighter pink, I do feel like it's more likely to not last as long as if you were getting a deep plum or a dark red. Just keep that in mind. But it feels almost like nothing on the lips. I don't feel like it's heavy. I don't feel like it's sticky. I don't feel it, like it's almost like it's not there, which is interesting. It does have, when you press your lips together, a very nice emollient kind of smoothness, a silkiness to it, but it doesn't feel kind of greasy or oily. This is such an elegant formula. This pink one, I kind of use like lip balm. Like I don't feel like I need to actually look in the mirror when I'm putting this on. And there are times that I carry this in my pocket or in my purse or tuck it inside my bra if I don't have a pocket in my clothing. And I just use it like lip balm throughout the day. I'll wear this on days when I'm not wearing any makeup because it's a very light, neutral, kind of soft pink, but it wears well, it feels great. Now the red one, I wore the red one out to dinner on my birthday and it lasted through um, salad, focaccia bread, um, a plate of pasta, and dessert. <laughs> okay, there was a lot to be eaten and it still looked great. A slightly kind of bare in the middle where my lips touch, but I was able to just smush my lips together and redistribute. I am kind of a tidy eater, so keep that in mind. I don't lick my lips, but I didn't feel like I got red everywhere. Um, and the great thing about this satin formula is that 
I don't wear a lip liner with this one. I usually do with red lip liners these days because I'm, you know, 49. <laughs> I'm losing the collagen in my lips. I do have those fine lines just to keep things kind of within the boundaries, but I don't always wear that red, that bright, bright red with a lip liner. Sometimes I just throw it on and go and it looks really good. I think this is a great formula and for $45, that's fantastic. All right, so remember the darker shade, I get a little bit more wear out of about four to five hours and this kind of pink shade, about three, three and a half hours. I really like this um, and the scent, it's there, but I only really feel like I'm smelling it when I like literally put my nose in the bullet. Cause like wearing it on the lips, I don't smell it at all. But I do wanna make sure you know there is a scent to this. And I feel like for $45, is it the most beautiful packaging there is? No, but it does really give luxury vibes. I like that it's refillable. I like that there's a lot of options. Okay, so number of shades, there are 58 shades on the Valentino website. But the one thing that's a little point of pain for me, a little bit of a frustration, is that they have both their matte and their satin lipsticks kind of mixed up. You can't sort them by, I want to see just the matte shades, or I want to see just the satin shades, or at least I didn't see that when I was looking on the website. So I had to literally go through and click each one to see what the shade was. And hmm, it would be so much easier if I could sort, like I'm looking for a satin lipstick. What, you know, how many satins do you have? So I really didn't want to go through and click on each one and figure out, you know, do tally marks, one matte, one satin, and tell you how many satins there are. So sorry, <laughs> I was being lazy and I didn't really feel like doing it, but there's a ton of shades and I do think that they have a really, really nice satin formula. Number seven on my list is a completely new lipstick to me. Now, this is not a new lipstick, but I've never had one before from this brand and it's from Sicily. Oh my goodness, this is Lafito Rouge lipstick. These are $70. Now I bought this, I think in January and it was 65, prices hadn't increased yet, but a $5 price jump in a luxury lipstick, it's, it's a lot. The one thing that's great about this is that there is no set to this. And this right here is the shade 15 Beige Manhattan. I love the way this lipstick feels. First of all, super creamy. Um, I also really like that the bullet has kind of like all of these angles on it. Um, and I normally just stick to using one side of a lipstick like this, but I have been kind of using it just everywhere. And I, I like that. It really makes me feel like I don't have to use this with a lip liner. Part of that is because it is kind of like this beigey shade. Another part of it is because these little edges and corners here make kind of carving out my lips super easy. And for somebody who's, you know, getting older, there's more of those fine lines. I really like that. Um, the other thing, let me tell you, this packaging is magnetic. I wasn't expecting it because the cap feels very lightweight and plastic. It's the base here that has weight to it. But as it goes on, it pulls in. It does have this touch of the nice red S for Sicily. And on the bottom, it's not just numbered and named. It does also have a corresponding color um, on the sticker on the bottom. So if you had a whole bunch of these and they were like bottom up, you could tell what shade you're getting based on the shade of the color on the bottom. That's really great. There are 27 shades in this range. And I really kind of feel like um, this lipstick is definitely, it's like they know their audience. They know their audience is you know, more mature people who have a little bit more spending money, who are probably less adventurous when it comes to makeup. So they're more kind of traditional makeup shades. I will say that I feel like the beiges and the browns that are in this lineup, they're more nuanced than some of the other ones. I feel like in my previous video, I was talking about House of Siage and of uh, the Guerlain Rouge G, how they had really kind of expected, you know, lipstick shades for a more mature kind of purchaser. I feel like these are more nuanced. I like it. I like the colors in this uh, Lafito Rouge just a little bit better than in some of the other ranges. And I do feel like it's lovely. The, the one thing that I'm struggling with is although there is a magnetic closure here, I am struggling with the fact that this is a $70 lipstick and it's high up because it feels good. It doesn't actually kind of go places. It doesn't travel. It is comfortable. It is nourishing. It does hydrate. At this point, we're asking ourselves, what is special? What is different about this lipstick? And for me, it's the, the shape of the bullet. That's, I don't think I have any other lipstick that looks like this, but beyond that, the way that it feels going on, 
It's not heavy, it's not overly emollient, but it's not drying. My lips never end up looking dry and flaky. And the older I get, the more prone to dryness I do have on my lips. And so when something can really lock in that moisture and make it feel soft and cushy and plush, and when I take the lipstick off at the end of the day, that it actually maintains or improves the state of my lips, that's what I'm looking for. I get about three to four hours out of this. Uh, it goes through snacks and cups of coffee or bottles of water fairly easily. Um, it does need to be touched up, but this is another one and it's probably the shade. I don't feel like it's really hard to put on without a mirror. I like that about it. I do like kind of easy application so that I can keep it with me and I don't have to go and be uber precise in a bathroom mirror or pull out my phone and go like, you know. I like to be able to just throw it on. For me, ease of use comes into it a lot. This is great. Number six in this lineup, I hate to say it, is the one from Tom Ford. This is just called the Tom Ford Lip Color. This isn't the matte, this is the satin formula. They just call it the lip color. And this bad boy is $59. Now, I haven't seen a price jump in the Tom Ford lipsticks yet. I know they came out with kind of like a new limited edition slim sort of lipstick. I think I'm gonna pass on this. This has kind of like a slight little bit of a sweet smell, but mostly just smells like lipstick to me. This is the shade number four, Indian Rose. It is such a lovely formula. I remember when I was trying this on for the first time. It's the video where I'm trying on 18 luxury lipsticks. And this was one, I hadn't had a Tom Ford lipstick in like a decade. And so I'd forgotten what the formula felt like and they probably reformulated since that point. But the truth was I was putting it on and I had this moment where I was kind of talking and I put it on and that first swipe I was like, wait, what? And I, I had like one of those moments where my whole brain just shut down because I was experiencing what it felt like on the lips. And it's creamy, it's silky, it's kind of cushy, but it's not greasy or heavy. It feels so nice, I love it. I get about four hours of wear out of this. It does, of course, transfer to utensils, to cups or mugs, um, and it, it's not like gonna hang tight through a full-on meal. You're gonna have to reapply at the end, but it's, it's not like a slouch of a lipstick. I like that it doesn't really kind of travel outside of my vermilion border. Um, I don't have it kind of getting into all of my fine lines, and it could be this shade because it's close to my lip color, and it's not a really bright, vibrant. Maybe I wouldn't notice it more, but I don't want this one with a lip liner. That to me is kind of like a really big deal. And this is also one of those lipsticks that at the end of the day, when I take it off, my lips are in the same condition, sometimes even just a little bit more nourished than they were before. Now, where I live, we're getting out of like the cold weather, we're finally in like the 40s and 50s. And so when I was trying this in January, the fact that my lips weren't deteriorating throughout the day was fantastic. This is another one, and I'm sure it's the shade, that I can just throw on without having to look in a mirror. That is a huge point for me. And the fact that I don't feel like it's instantly traveling outside, I do have those fine lines. I don't wanna look like everything is feathering and spidering out onto places where it wasn't intended to be, but I like this one a lot. Now, I feel like because the packaging were, to, mine is good up, sorry. <laughs> Let me wipe it down. Um, it's beautiful. You know, this black and gold is so lovely. Um, it's a snap closure not refillable, I'm kind of surprised. I don't feel like Tom Ford's brand has changed this packaging since they launched lipsticks more than a decade ago, but the one thing I wouldn't be surprised of is if they decide that they, you know, are gonna reformulate their lipsticks and that they're gonna come out with refillable or magnetic packaging, because this is just a snap closure, and although it's nice, it's heavy, it's weighty, it's beautiful, I feel like packaging has changed so much, even in just the last four to five years where we're kind of seeing a lot of luxury brands lean into refillables. I think that's one of those things or more customizable like caps like the Guerlain and the Dior. There's a lot of brands that do stuff like that and I would not be surprised if this ends up you know getting an update eventually but of course that just means the price is going to go up as well. But for a $59 lipstick it, it feels weighty, it feels luxurious but to me it's how it feels on the lips and how it wears. This is stunning. I've been wearing this one in Indian Rose so much. I really like this lipstick. Coming in at number five is one that I tried and I was so blown over by, so surprised about, and it's from Chanel. This is their Rouge Allure High Intensity Lip Color. Okay, so this is a slightly skinnier 
um, lipstick than their Rouge Coco or their Coco Flash. Um, and this is one where if you press this here, the whole thing just kind of springs out. It's spring loaded. Um, it is also refillable. If you're paying for the whole thing, the component as well as the lipstick, it's $56. And if you want to just get the refill, this right here is 42. They're kind of expensive. Um, but what's, I don't feel like this is like really heavier luxe. I like the touch of this here. Um, you know, it's very simply says Chanel down here and then the sticker on the bottom in black and white. But this doesn't feel heavy and weighty and looks like the Valentino or the Sicily or the Tom Ford. This is kind of plasticky and lightweight. But what I love about this, these are really like high pigment. And for me, it's the way that it feels. This is the shade Rose Independent. It has a really nice silky feel to it. I feel like it kind of edged out the Tom Ford just a little bit because of the slimline packaging. The older I get, the smaller my lips are getting. I'm losing that volume. And having this precision right here really helps. And the fact that it's refillable, I like that because I don't want to have to keep paying for expensive packaging, even though doesn't feel expensive. Um, if I can, you know, knock down the price significantly and pay 42 for the refill, and it's not the same as paying 56 for the whole lipstick. But for me, there are not a ton of shades. There are only 17 shades. There is a scent to this. It does have a slightly floral scent to it. And what's interesting is some of the other like lipsticks I have from Chanel don't have a scent. I do not understand personally when a brand puts a scent in some lipsticks, but not all. I don't know what that's about. That was a little confusing to me because like every Gucci lipstick smells like a Gucci lipstick. And when it doesn't happen here, I, I wish that they would either just not put a fragrance in or they would put the same fragrance in everything. Because then I would associate that scent with that brand of lipstick. Like I have those memories in my mind, like a Lancome lipstick, I know what it smells like. A L'Oreal lipstick, know what she smells like. Like I can tell the brand by the scent sometimes, um, but I'm not kind of allergic or sensitive to scents, but it's weird that this one has one and some of the other ones don't. The reason this one is up so far is because of how hydrating and creamy it feels. This is super luxurious on the lips. This actually makes my lips more hydrated the more that I wear it. Now it is a very pigmented lipstick so this isn't one that I throw on without a mirror or my phone close by just to double check that I don't have it like kind of outside where I want it. But the other thing that's cool about this lipstick is even though it is very pigmented it doesn't go outside of my vermilion border. It doesn't find all of those lines and kind of spider and feather out. Um, I do usually pair it with a lip liner but I wore it on Thanksgiving day and I was busy cause I was in the kitchen and I, I did a very minimal makeup look, but I threw this on cause I wanted to know what it wore like. And you know, what's crazy about this is that I didn't wear a lip liner with that that day. I put it on while I was still cooking in the kitchen. By the time we sat down to dinner at 4.30, I ate a full Thanksgiving meal with this. You know, I was drinking beverages, I was eating food. We had pie afterwards. And guess whose lipstick was still on and didn't have like a really bare patch in the middle. Now, this is not like a bulletproof lipstick, but I feel like this does better than some other brands. Like other ones instantly like, they go places or they don't last that long. They get caught on the food going in your mouth or on the glass that you're drinking from or the utensil or get it blot off by the napkin that you have. This one, I was super impressed. When I was done eating, I could tell like I was a little bit bare in the middle. So I smushed my lips together and then I used my finger in the Cupid's bow to kind of pull things down and kind of, uh, you know, bring color up here and down here to the center. And then it looked like I had just reapplied my lipstick and I had just redistributed. I don't know, this is a really interesting, really beautiful lipstick. I just wish there were more shades because the rest of the shades, I'm always trying to buy a lipstick in a shade that I don't have. I don't think I have a lot that's kind of like this. And I like this, but a lot of the rest of the shades look like typical luxury lipstick colors, pinks, reds. Um, you know, the certain types of nudes or peaches. And mm, I got that. I want to see what else there is. So I would like this formula line to be expanded shade wise. And we'll get some interesting taupes, some browns, some, you know, plummy mobs, like some other things. Not that there aren't some of those shades in there already, but it's not as nuanced a range as I would like. But I really do like the way this feels and this wears on the lips.
number four is from Dior. Oh my goodness. This is the reformulated Rouge Dior lipstick. This is the satin finish. This is a $49 lipstick. Um, there is that kind of powdery Dior floral scent to this, but they updated the packaging because now guess what? She's magnetic. Still refillable like the last ones. And the one thing that's great, the old Dior um, satin lipstick packaging looked like this. It is different. Um, here you have like this silver emblem on the top before it just had the CD for Christian Dior. And I feel like, you know, this packaging here that had that same kind of silver motif on the outside, I kind of prefer it this way. It looks a little bit more luxe, a little sleeker. And, and the new component is just a little bit heavier. The one thing that I love though, doesn't matter which one you have, if you have the old component and you want to try the new formulation, guess what? They fit. I think that's super smart. It would make me so angry because I bought maybe three or four of these, you know, older ones from Dior. And they're not really old at the time. I didn't know they were going to be reformulating and repackaging. I have four of these. If the components, the new refills didn't fit in this, if I wanted to get this same shade again, I would have been angry. All right, let me throw this one on. This one is the shade 720. I think this one's just called Econ. I really like this formula. It doesn't really feel heavy. It doesn't really feel tacky. There is a nice kind of cushy plushness to it. It is just a little bit heavier than say the Tom Ford or the Sicily. But what I like about that is when I have a formula that I feel like it's it's not heavy, it doesn't feel like there's a lot on there, but I can kind of just barely feel it. I feel like it tends to be a little bit more tenacious, that it's going to stay where I put it and this lipstick, I loved it in the original satin formula. Um, I have several of these. I think they're really, really nice. But I don't know that there's a lot of difference between when these were $45 and in this kind of older packaging. Um, I like the updated touch of it being magnetic and just slightly more luxe and heavy. But I don't really feel like the formula itself is different. This lipstick is not heavy, but it is just slightly more noticeable on the lips than some of the other ones. I feel like it's it's soft and it's cushy, but maybe the Tom Ford and the Chanel and the Sicily and especially the Valentino were just a little bit more, I don't know, they moved easier on the lips. I'm not saying that there's resistance to this, but what I like about that is that kind of lets me know that this formula is not gonna instantly go. I get so much wear out of this. I get like five to five and a half hours of wear out of this formula of lipstick. It's super comfortable to wear. This is one, and maybe it's because it's not the red, but this shade doesn't really go outside of my vermilion border. I don't have it kind of going places it's not needed. I don't feel like I have to wear this with a lip liner. I mean, I do sometimes, cause you know, Sometimes I feel like a lip liner, sometimes I don't. But what's great about this is that it it kind of hangs tight. It hangs in through snacks, through beverages. I drink a lot of coffee, tea, water all day long. I'm always carrying around some beverage of some sort. And even though this does transfer, because it is, you know, a lipstick, a bullet cream lipstick, it just actually, the color hangs tight. I like that and I don't end up getting that bald patch right in the middle. I feel like it wears evenly off over itself and, it, and it's super easy to reapply. I really, really like this shade. I like the updated packaging, but I also like that, you know, if you've got the old packaging, the new refills, they're the same size. There are 26 satin shades, but there are 64 total shades. I feel like they kind of leaned in more to the mattes. They have mattes and they have velvet mattes. I feel like this is a really beautiful lipstick and the upgraded, you know, changes magnetic, you know, the outside packaging, the weightiness. I feel like you're charging me more, but I feel like it's a very different experience than this. This was a beautiful lipstick, but this definitely feels more luxe to me. Um, but it's still great, and there's a ton of shades in this range. I really, really like the way that they made those very careful decisions for what they were gonna change and how they were gonna change it. And I feel like it does still merit that $49 price point, but it all comes down to what are you willing to spend your money on? The last three are kind of like, I don't know, don't ask me, I couldn't pick a favorite child. So I would say these last three are like right up there. They're neck and neck. They're so, so, so good. So at number three is the Lip Power from Armani. This satin formula is stunning. I like 
but there's no scent to it. So this teardrop shape is fantastic for getting your Cupid's bow. And then that bottom portion right along the bottom lip line, it's just stupid easy to apply. This is the shade 109. This is such a pretty easy nude to wear. I love it so much. If you're curious, these are $45. There's no scent to these. I like that there's no scent. I mean, it doesn't even really smell like lipstick. I'm not smelling ingredients. It kind of smells like nothing. Hooray. <laughs> but I like this so, so much. Now, when it comes to the packaging, I like that she's tall, that she's red, that we have like the two colors and the silver emblem here in the middle. You know, it's slightly flared at either end. It's really quite nice, but it's just a snap closure. Also, not refillable. But I feel like even though it's kind of, you know, plastic and uh, I, I like the height of it. I like the, you know, Armani red color here. I don't know. I kind of really like this packaging, even though it's not giving that same sort of luxury feel like this or these guys. I really like it, like it, like it, like it. There are 19 shades in this range. I do have this in one of the like quintessential Armani reds in shade number 400. But this is the one that I've worn the most. I picked this up, I think, was it last spring? And I just have been wearing it nonstop. It's a super easy nude for me to wear. It goes with so many things. But here's the best part of it. This lipstick in both the red and this nude shade do not require a lip liner. That's huge for me. It also has just a little bit of shine where it's not too much, but just enough to make my lips look a little bit fuller, a little bit healthier, and it wears so well. This does not disappear on me through cups of coffee, through snacking. I can eat a light meal and be just fine. This is beautiful. Another one that's super easy to reapply over the top of itself, and it's one of those that when it wears off, I don't have like patchiness or anything. It's, I don't know, it's a very elegant formula. It is a little heavier on the mouth. It feels a little bit more substantial, a little bit less slippery and a little bit more creamy. You do feel it just a little bit more, but I feel like that between that and the Dior, these are kind of really close to how they feel on the mouth. Um, so if you have one of these, you'll know what the other one feels like. They're more creamy and less slippy. I get about six hours of wear out of this. For me, that's huge, especially with a nude. A lot of times I'll have to reapply a nude. The red, of course, would make sense that it would last longer because it's got more pigment in it, more noticeable contrast on my fair skin. But I really, really, really like this. When I get to the point where I'm trying a formula and I'm like, I need more of this, that says a lot because there are some lipsticks that I have that are you know previously in this series or i'm like oh that's nice i'll use it it's good i wouldn't say don't buy it but it doesn't make me as a lipstick snob want to run out and buy more this is one where i ran out and i bought more that is kind of like my my metric do you make me want more of you and yes that's the case so the fact that this doesn't need a lip liner lasts for six hours man it's a really nice lipstick. Number two on this list is my much loved YSL The Bold. This is a formula they developed and released in the fall, I think of 2022, and I picked it up in a red, in my favorite YSL red, which is shade 01. And I, I was head over heels. I loved it. I wore it constantly. It is so good. And then um, they had a sale last summer, summer of 2023, where you could buy one get one free. I was like, I've been a good girl. I deserve another lipstick. So I picked up, I'm um, kind of like a really pretty pink leaning nude, which is 1968. And this one here, this is shade number 10. I think this one's called Brazen Nude. These lipsticks are $45 a piece. They are not refillable. And they come in this kind of square packaging with the black top and the gold bottom. They are very reminiscent of the YSL Pure Couture, which has the gold on the top and the black on the bottom, but they're just a little bit taller. And I feel like, yep, they're just a little bit narrower. So this is a little bit chunkier and shorter. So if you have a lot of YSL in your collection, you'd be able to tell that the Rouge Pure Couture is this one and the Bold are this. So if you're wondering what the difference is, I love this lipstick. Very comfortable. They both have that very much kind of florally YSL scent to them. But the one that is the Rouge Pure Couture that kind of came mid-pack, it's a beautiful formula, but it is not as pigmented. It doesn't last as long. 
and it's a little bit sheerer. This is definitely much more of a creamy lipstick. You can feel it on your lips. And this is a tenacious, like, creamy lipstick. It lasts for six hours. And I was like, whoa. The minute a lipstick lasts that long and imparts moisture and it feels good, it feels kind of uh, creamy and plushy on the lips. There's some cush to it. This is so great. The other thing that I love about this formula is that despite the fact that my lips are older, I have those vertical lines around the edges. And if a formula is a little bit too soft or too emollient, it finds those lines and just travels out. This one doesn't. And I have a bright red. I have kind of like a nudie pink and this really pretty kind of uh, toasty, warm color. But what's great about this formula is just how good it feels and how it doesn't go where it shouldn't. I do wish there was a little bit more, I don't know, maybe elegance to the packaging. It, it feels kind of like, I mean, it, it does look nice. I feel like this sort of packaging here with this kind of raised detailing, the black and the gold is so pretty, but I definitely feel like there is room for a little bit more luxe. I would say that they weigh about the same, both of these, but this does not feel as weighty and heavy as like my Tom Ford or the new one. Oh man, huge difference between the new one from Dior and even like the Valentino one, um, still a little bit weightier. It is nice packaging, but there's no magnetic closure here. That's okay. There are 18 shades of this, but this is one of those lipsticks that the minute I got it, I had to get more. And when you have as many lipsticks as me, the minute I do that, yes. And I like the fact this is what I consider a low maintenance lipstick, even though it is extremely pigmented, like one swipe gives you full color, is that I don't have to worry about it going where it shouldn't. And it's not one of those that leaves like a uh, stain behind. And there's nothing wrong with that unless it's a windy day and your hair gets in your lipstick and you pull it out and you don't know and you've got like little trails and then you try and rub them out later and they've stained. <laughs> That's when it's a problem. Or if you're eating a snack or drinking a beverage and you don't know and you get lipstick outside of your lipstick line, this formula is not high maintenance and that's why I really like it. And that's why it's ranking at number two. The lipstick that I reach for the most, that I have the most of, that is kind of like one of these creamy, shiny lipsticks. And I, you probably already knew it was coming. It's a Lisa Eldridge. This is a luxuriously lucent lipstick. I have so many of these. And the great thing about this, for me, the reason this is number one <laughs> is because, because for $36, you're getting beautiful Lux packaging that has a magnetic closure to it. It has one of the most comfortable formulas I own that is not high maintenance, that does not require me to use a mirror to reapply, um, that just feels so good at one of the low, it's like $1 above that $35, like this is what we're calling, well, what I'm calling a luxury lipstick. These lipsticks from Lisa Eldridge, they are literally the bar I hold up and, and test every other lipstick up against. Is it better than this? Is it better than this? Now remember, this is my personal preference. I'm gonna put this shade on. This is Je ne sais quoi. The reason this is my favorite type of kind of creamy lipstick is because first of all, for $36, you're getting a lot here. These lipsticks come in a lot of different shades, like some of my other favorites here. Let me just show you. I love the Deep Plum called Night Thoughts. It's so pretty. This brown here is called Meet Me in Berlin. This red is Palazzo. The, this formula is beyond. This pink here is Wonder Wheel. I mean, there's just a, a wide range of shades. Um, I'm looking for one of my favorite ones called Painterly and it might be in my purse. But the reason that I love this formula so much is as you can see on the back of my hand here, it's not like really heavily pigmented. It is sheer. It does let your natural lip color shine through. It's so lightweight. This literally feels like a hydrating, moisturizing balm. I love that. Again, one of those lipsticks that is not high maintenance. Despite the fact that I have like this deep berry shade or a red, I do not have to babysit this lipstick. This lipstick is one of those that I can put it on and wear it and it looks beautiful all day. It also, because it is such a really comfortable and really elegant formula. My lips always feel better after having worn this all day. Now, 
the previous video I recorded yesterday. So my lips had done eight lip swatches yesterday. They just did eight more today. They are very much in a dry and a like a, ah, please don't make me wipe off another and put on another lipstick kind of feeling. And ending on this is like a treat. It feels like I put a lip treatment on my lips. I love this lipstick so much. This is one of those, again, I do not need a mirror to put this on. I do not need um, like my phone. This, this is just super easy. For me, it's the ease of application. It's the price point. It's the fact that it does have that magnetic closure and this super elegant gold tube. Now, the hard part is all of my Lisa Eldridge lipsticks look the same and there's three bullet formulas. And so I keep them all stored on the end up so I can see the names. And I remember which is which based on the name, but I know that I'm kind of weird that way. Not everybody remembers what shade their lipstick is called. I, I definitely do, I'm kind of obsessive that way. But this lipstick is so good. Now, it doesn't last as long as the Armani or as the YSL Bold. It definitely has a shorter lifespan, but because it's so stupid easy to reapply, that's one of the things I love about it. The other thing that I really like is that the shades that Lisa creates, even though we have a brown, we have a berry, we have a red, they're not your typical run-of-the-mill brown berry or red. They are nuanced. The mauve tones have some brown to them. Um, there is some really pretty neutrality to other shades. And I think that for me, it's the nuanced shades that I don't know that anybody else gets as well as Lisa does. She has such a painter's eye when she's developing colors. I'm not saying there aren't, you know, shades that are similar, but there's something about these. Every single lipstick I have from Lisa, despite the formula, just looks good. I am fortunate to have a neutral skin tone so I can wear just about any shade, but they all make me feel glamorous. And I feel like when you can do it for $36 in Lux, heavy, weighty packaging. Your lips feel better. It doesn't go where it shouldn't. It's easy to reapply. Um, it just feels like a treatment on your lips. Like, a, I mean, that, that's all I want. I really love this lipstick. It is one of my all time favorite lipsticks to wear. If you're curious, there are 14 shades in this lineup. That is like the only drawback to me. But this is when I remind myself that Lisa is kind of like an independent brand. And she is footing the bill for creating new products, for um, shade extensions. She started out with two pinks in this formula. I think it was 2019. And it was Love of My Life and um, Go Lightly. And I'll tell you, ever since I tried this formula years ago, five years ago, every time she releases new ones, I just get them. There's like maybe one or two shades that I don't have because I don't really prefer a peach lipstick or I don't, oddly enough, while I'm wearing one. But that's what I'm saying. Like Lisa, I don't like pink lipsticks. Lisa can make a pink and I'm like, ooh, this is pretty. Lisa makes a peach or kind of like a corally lipstick. I'm like, I normally don't wear that. And it looks fantastic. I don't know, it's that, it's that nuanced color that just puts it right up there for me. So that's why this is number one. It feels good. It's the most, one of the most affordable out of all of these. Um, it is weighty, it is luxe, it is beautiful. I want there to be more shades and I am crossing my fingers that she's gonna release more of these like this summer because man, this formula, I still can't decide if I like the True Velvets better than the Luxuriously Lucents, but there's not a bad bullet lipstick from Lisa Eldridge. I'll just tell you that. In my opinion, those are the lipsticks that everything else has to live up to. Thank you so much for watching today. Boy, this was so much fun for me. I, I love lipstick. It is literally my favorite makeup item. And on the days when I don't wear anything else, I always have a lip product on, usually a lipstick, but I always have a lip product on. I, I feel naked without one. I wanna know, are you one of those people that when you're thinking about getting a new lip product, a new lipstick perhaps, what is your criteria? Are you solely concerned about shade? Maybe you're the person who's like, I'm not spending more than X amount, or what is easy for me to find locally? You don't wanna to have to go on the hunt to order something internationally. Like, what is it that is your criteria? I am very, very curious about that. On top of that, I would love to know what your thoughts are. Like, did I have some in here that you're like, oh, that's the worst lipstick, how do you like that? Or vice versa, were ones that were at the bottom for me were some of your all-time favorites. Don't forget, I'm gonna link both of those 
other videos, part one and part two, to this ranking all of my luxury cream and satin lipsticks in the description box along with a playlist. Um, also down in the description box, you are gonna find affiliate links. If you happen to decide to pick something up and you use one of those links, thank you so much. Um, it does help to support my channel, which allows me to go through and buy like expensive bougie lipsticks so we can talk about them here. You don't have to use them, but if you do, I really, really appreciate it. Let me know what your favorite type of cream lipstick is, and it doesn't have to be luxury, because like maybe, sometimes I feel like some of these are kind of overrated. Not these guys, not today's guys, but some of the ones towards the end, let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day, and I will see you again soon.